All right, uh, since Pokemon's 20th anniversary is in about a week, depending on what time zone you're in, for me it's the 20th, so yeah, a week. Um, I wanted to give some predictions. Not really for games, but just for general Pokemon things. Um, yes, before we get into it, I know. I'm recording this on my Photos app, which is kind of primitive. You'd expect this from a 2011 video, but that's not, that's not the point here. The point is I'm going to try and make some predictions. And I'm gonna be right. Just, just you wait. I'm sorry, I forgot the accent on the E. I'm typing on a keyboard. You won't have to like Google it and copy and paste it into it. Let's get into it. First of all, you might be wondering what the hell this is. Why there? Where's the money sign? Well, um, you, you know how hard gold and uh, so silver and black two and white two are all super expensive, and you know, kind of to, kind of donate your kidneys and your soul to buy them. I think that's gonna happen with the 3DS game. Is it, 3DS games? Sorry. Uh, especially uh, XY, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, because X and Y, as of now, are the only ways to experience the Kalos region. And uh, I'm pretty sure Pokemon like Go Goats can only be found in them. They might be in Sword and Shield, I don't know about that. But yeah, uh, that might uh, drive up the price. And Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, once uh, Gen 7 becomes nostalgic, it's probably gonna drive up the price. So I think that might happen. And um, as for a game, I think they're gonna port all the Gen 3 games onto the Switch. It just seems like an inevitability. That might be announced uh, next week on the 25th anniversary. And if it does happen, I bet you it's gonna be $60. And I also bet you I'm gonna buy it. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm gonna predict is that Generation 8 is gonna be nostalgic. And now that we're ragging on it, people in the future... 10 years from now are gonna be like, oh wow, it was amazing. Well, if you're watching this and you're like 10 years from now and everyone's saying, oh wow, those games are great, they weren't. Please stop liking them. All right, they, they, they took out the national decks, they made all the animations bad. You're you're nostalgically biased. Wake up, folks. Um, they really have any predictions planned after this, but I'm gonna make something up on the spot. Uh. People are saying Let's Go Johto might happen. Honestly, I don't think it's going to happen because um, with the first games, the original games just had the 151 Pokemon in it. With Generation 2, like a lot of the a lot of the regional Pokemon in Johto are of the past generation. So it's either they include those and make it kind of like we're starting the series over again with this subset, or they only include the Johto Pokemon, which would be weird. And, uh, let's face it, the Let's Go games were made to bank on uh, Kanto nostalgia, so probably not gonna happen. Another big one here people are uh, screaming about is Diamond and Pearl remakes, which, honestly, uh, I used to say, okay, they're not gonna happen, they're not gonna happen, but it's becoming more and more likely, but at the same time, it's becoming more and more unlikely. If they were to do this, they probably would have done it on, um, they probably would have done it on the 3DS. But they didn't do it. Instead, we got uh, these games, which I won't have, which I have no shame in saying, are my second favorite Pokemon games. I like them so much more. But still, um, that, that, that's besides the point. Diamond and Pearl had uh, some microphone features, touchscreen features, which doesn't really translate well with the Switch. And that's also why I think these games can't really get ported. Um, with the DS games, if they somehow, like I don't know, maybe made a DS player. Where all the microphones and touchscreen add-ons were in there, kind of like a Game Boy player. The the aspect, the screen resolution wouldn't be a problem. You could just put them all horizontally. And it would kind of work on 16x9 display. But with the 3DS, it's a lot trickier since the top screen is 16x9 and the bottom screen is, um, I don't know what resolution it is, but it's a square, basically. So yeah, that'd be kind of hard to cram onto a display without needing either needing a border or just having it be black. I mean, with, for people with capture cards, it looks good because you have your layout on it, but it, it doesn't work, so I don't think 3DS games would get released, or at least, you know, I don't think you'll be able to put the cartridges in some sort of player. With DS games, very unlikely, but uh, they might be able to pull off some sort of DS player. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. So, um, those are, uh, I think that's about it for games. But what do I think the fandom will be like? Well, for one, I think they'll still be um, banking for likes based on uh, drawing the Kanto starters over and over again. But uh, other than that, 
I think people are going to be nostalgic over generation 6, 7, and 8. I, I just feel like that might happen a lot. Uh, seeing some, very little, but some, like, one, what's, one in a million people being nostalgic over X and Y, which I think is going to happen a lot more. But, uh, why my, uh, prediction about what people are going to be nostalgic about is kind of low. Let's think about uh, some other stuff. Like, um, like what? Hmm, what compromises do I think Gen 9 will have? Because Gen 8 has a lot of compromises. Now, uh, when the National Dex thing was first revealed, I was really angsty and still am. So I, I made the, oh, at this rate, Gen 9 is gonna look like this. So I think I'm gonna expand on that. Uh, I, I, you didn't see it because I posted it onto a Reddit account. So, uh, I might show it. Not, not in this video, but anyway, so what, Gen 9, what will Gen 9 look like? Well, for one, they might clean up the racks and actually add all the Pokemon back. It, it makes sense. I mean, you remove the Pokemon from Pokemon. It's not even like it's for balancing. Even if you remove some Pokemon, there'll, there'll still be ones that are better or worse. So it doesn't fix the problem there. In fact, if anything, it narrows down the Pokemon pool. But I'm no competitive battler, so don't quote me on that one. Anyway, so that, that kind of derailed into a Gen 8 rant. But yeah, Gen 9. I think the region is going to be in Italy, uh, based on Italy. If not that, maybe China. Uh, I think those two are the most likely. But what I like to see, uh, Australia would be nice, but uh, I mean, this might be biased since I'm living in the Middle East. But a uh, Middle Eastern region would be cool too. Uh, not sure what Pokemon they would add, like uh, maybe. They already have a Falcon Pokemon with. Is, is there a Falcon Pokemon? I, I know there are a lot of bird Pokemon. The closest. The uh, Bravier is an Eagle. I thought of Pidgeot. I don't want to say the Falcon, but it's a, some sort of Pigeon. Like the Pidge in the family line. So I guess a Falcon Pokemon wouldn't be that bad. And, um. They did a Middle Eastern region, which they probably won't. But, yeah. Gen 9, Italy, or China. China, a lot less likely, but Italy, definitely. I think that would be a, I think that'd be a no-brainer in terms of regions. Oh, yeah, and back to the topic of Gen 3 releases. Re-releases, sorry about that. I think they're going to re-release Colosseum and XD. But, honestly, um, if they do, if they actually do that, it's going to be a bit weird. Since you have your, Gen, your, your Game Boy Advance games and your GameCube games. Are they going to link up together like the original releases do, um, even though they're on the same system? I, I, I don't know about that. Maybe not. Oh, I'm getting a bit exhausted by this. More Pokemon predictions. More Pokemon predictions. X2 and Y2. This is an idea I've had floating in my mind for a while. Now, this is much less of a prediction, more of a wish, but I really think X and Y do deserve sequels more than Pokemon Z. Because these games, um, they have a lot of potential. And there's a lot of mysteries in them, which is why people like want Pokemon Z. But it'd be a lot better if they added an X2 and Y2. Maybe, like, after what will happen to Kalos these past seven years. You know, it would be really nice. Maybe you could even travel to Sinnoh. I really think traveling to Sinnoh would be perfect for an X2 and Y2, since... I've noticed uh, like that X, X and Y are kind of like Kanto and Sinnoh tossed into a blender. Like, you have all the Kanto legendaries and the Snorlax blocking the path. You have things like the Poke Radar, the snowy areas. It's like a northern region. I, uh, I get a lot of Sinnoh vibes from Kalos. And, um... Oh yeah, not to mention it's the only other game where you can get Stunky. Oh wait, no, Sword and Shield. Stunky, but before Sword and Shield. Man, Stunky and Purloin, uh, not Purloin, but Stunky and Pur Glamiel are in really limited availability. Has anyone noticed that? No, not the topic of this video, but still, I think we can make Stunky and Glamiel more available. Just look, go to the Bulbapedia article for either of them. You'll be a bit shocked. And, um, I, I think that's about it for Pokemon predictions. If any of these come true, then I bet, uh, comments on this are gonna be like, Oh, wow, you actually got it. No way. Like if you're here ten years later. 
I, I already know it. But that's if this video gets more than 10 views and if it even gets traction at all. All will be revealed soon, I guess. Uh, happy Pokemon 25th anniversary, guys.